good day everybody welcome back to the channel well today I have a little gem to show you this is the golden gem adding machine that's right another addition to my growing collection of mechanical adding and calculating devices you know I wondered to myself how did you get to the point where now you have an adding machine or calculator collection and I guess to me it's obvious where it started was back when I was a kid and I started getting interested in the uh, abacus and it sort of grew from the abacus to other things but this is a old unit from the early part of the 20th century let's take a closer look at it and also I need to do a little bit of cleaning and lubrication on it and a repair on it let's look at this stay tuned well the leather case on this golden gem is very much in a corroded condition you can see up here and it tends to shed little particles of leather. Um, the earlier versions of the Golden Gem had two metal flat legs that folded out from either side uh, but in somewhere in the 1920s they went to this uh, metal bale kind of a system so this this machine uh, does date to the 1920s so this is a chain calculator these came in production around 1907 or so and they were kind of advanced for their age because in that era mechanical calculating devices required a more complicated way of doing carryovers from one digit to the next and the um, chain calculator thing used its own uh, mechanism to do the carryover automatically and that was one of the advances that made these quite popular we will open this up later and take a look and see how that carryover actually works uh, this is an addition only device in the sense that you can only add digits but you can do subtraction by means of complementary arithmetic the later versions of this calculator had a red scale on the right side of the chain for doing complementary subtraction okay let's take a look and see how this carryover system works let's start with the tens column I want to point your attention to these little brass arm that sticks out from the brass wheel and this little spring right here below it so if I go and move down the chain one more you see how this little arm hits this spring and it causes the, the little arm to flip inwards and that engages the gear on the next wheel to the left you can see on this this other one is the same way here's this little arm the arm is actually sticking out a little bit away from the wheel normally but then this spring pushes it I don't know if you can see the angle on that arm it's just sticking out away from the periphery of the wheel but when it hits that spring it pushes it in like that and that engages the next sprocket so here you can see a good angle of the uh, little spring-loaded arm or the pivoting arm it normally sticks out a little bit so it does not engage the sprocket on the next wheel um, the problem with the units column here is that the little arm is angled outward like it normally would be but the spring the brass spring is collapsed it's flattened and so when that arm comes around there's nothing pushing it inwards to engage the sprocket on the next wheel so this little spring right here is the problem it's collapsed and I'm hoping I can take a um, tool and try to fix it here there's the little indicator panel let's take that off you can see that this is all one piece of metal so maybe I can just pull it off here Okay, I'm going to try just to bend it a little bit up more so it's more springy. Like that. And then, so I have to get the bottom of this metal piece down here set into the bracket. Like that. Put the bottom in first. And then try to engage the top. And this spring should ride along this brass collar, I think if I understand the way it works. That's my neighbor's car alarm. He only seems to chirp his car alarm when I'm shooting video. Okay. Now let's put the uh, indicator panel back in place. If I test this out, let's try pulling the chain down. There's my little pin and when it hits this spring it should 
tilt down inwards and engage and oop, doop, doop, there it goes so we did have a carryover so what I need to do is just get this indicator panel I just need to get this indicator panel back in place good once we remove the chassis of the gem from its backing frame, and that, by the way, needs to be cleaned up, uh, we can see a little bit more detail the casting uh, that this thing is built around. Um, you can see these little spring-loaded uh, anti-reversing springs that keep the gears from going backwards. Or Actually, they, they sort of make a ratcheting or indexing spring effect. And you can see the little springs and washers that hold them into place. But the main thing to notice here is look at the slack in the uh, units column. This is the tens and hundreds and the other five columns. The chain looks like it's uh, pretty tight. But the units and tens, it's really slack. And I think the problem is simply wear, right? Because when you're doing carryovers, large carryovers, the units will uh, take the brunt of the torque and so that chain has just gotten stretched out over the years because of the force it's had to endure and that's probably the the biggest wear problem with these little calculators is the chain eventually wears out and the little knob the control knob is a left hand thread uh, because you turn the knob toward you to operate it I also wanted to show to you this little cotter pin that's on this shaft and if you were to remove that cotter pin you could pull this shaft out and remove all these gears and the other end of the shaft sits in the left hand uh, frame in this hole here okay so I'm gonna try doing a little flushing of this mechanism with some isopropyl alcohol just because there's a bunch of old lubricants in this thing and then I'm going to try to re-lubricate it. Now my little indicator thing wants to pop up here. I'm not so sure if I want to get alcohol directly on the little letters. don't know how fast or permanent they are. And then I'm going to put a little naphtha just to displace some of that um, alcohol and then we'll finish it up with maybe a slight amount of tri-lube gun oil and a little bit of tri-lube here see if I can get the straw in I'll just try to put a little bit on each one and then the bushing here where it rotates in the body of the unit And then on the other side, put a little bit of oil in there, and we'll see, and then just exercise it. Okay, so this rear cover, I'm going to use a little bit of naphtha, try to take the grease off and the dirt off, and also uh, give it a little coating of uh, protective oil. I got a little naphtha on a paper towel and I'm just going to try to clean the inside surfaces of this uh, metal body shell. Okay. Okay, I've tried to force uh, these tags for the units and tens column a little bit down into the notch a little bit more so they'll hopefully sit flatter like the other ones do. And now I have to take off the knob and try to get this back into the back frame. Like that. Like that. All right, so we're going to try to slip this body shell back carefully. We'll see how this works. Like that. And hopefully that will keep these indicator numbers in place, get the screw holes lined up. Okay, so this uh, bail, the support rod, is a wee bit tarnished. So, just going to try to get some of this corrosion off. Alright, nice. The support rod. And on the other side, goes like that. 
Okay, so let's talk a bit about these nomenclature labels. So this was the orientation of these two labels when I got the unit. But looking online, there is an online website, I'll leave the link below, and the picture they have shows, I think this one is rotated like that. So I think I'm going to put it like that when I put them back together. Got to get these holes lined up properly. All right. So the Golden Jam was designed by Abraham Isaac Gancher, Nobuyoshi Kodama, and Albert Zabriskie. In the 1902-1906 time frame, Gancher had set up the Automatic Adding Machine Company to market the machine, and it was at first merely called the Gem, had a separate stand that it was slid into. And around 1910, a version uh, was made that was set into a wooden box. And in 1912, it was renamed the Golden Jam. It was given a set of folding legs on either side. Sometime in the 1920s, they made this change where you have the, the wire bale to support the uh, unit. So Gancher was a uh, Russian Jew born in 1875, immigrated to the United States in 1892, initially worked as a leather salesman, and... He became interested in adding machines in the early part of the 20th century. He was also a, a, a small handwriting expert and specialist and apparently uh, was uh, featured in Ripley's Believe It or Not by having written the Bill of Rights on a postage stamp. Uh, interesting story. Um, so the Golden Gem, this seven-digit version, probably sold more than 400,000 of them up until maybe possibly into the 1940s. Production numbers, though, are hard to come by. This particular unit dates to somewhere in the 1920s, just from the, the wire bale and the fairly low serial number of uh, 73,000 range. Okay, in order to test out the accuracy mechanically of this thing, you know, because we're using chains and gears and maybe it'll slip a tooth and become inaccurate, I added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to itself nine times. And I get this number, one, 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 oh, three. So let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times nine equals, hey, it's actually accurate, and it got the exact answer. So in spite of all the interesting little mechanical stuff going on, it looks like it's fairly accurate. Well, let's see what this weighs, shall we? 435 grams minus the stylus. With the stylus, 443 grams. Well, anytime you're dealing with a mechanical calculating device with an automatic carryover, it begs the question of what happens if you try to carry over all the columns at once. This probably explains why the units column got most of the wear. Let's try the middle three, for instance. I'm going to set them to 999. Then I'm going to add one to it. And when you add the one, the carryover is going to happen to uh, three columns at once. Uh, and it's a little bit hard to pull. You have to do a little bit of force and speed in order for that to carry over to the fourth column. So you can imagine what it would take to do that with more than three columns, or in this case, uh, using the uh, ones column that seems to have more wear. You can do it, but you've got to do it kind of fast. Uh, there seems to be a little bit more play in the chain, probably a little more wear in it. Um, and so let's try this just for the fun of it let's not force the units column but let's try a one here and we'll go actually you know what we can go that way one two three so six columns will it will it carry over let's find out uh, so it just doesn't have enough speed and force if you were going to do something greater than one uh, yeah you're, it feels like you might even almost break it. So my feelings are because of the age of this uh, unit, I wouldn't want to force a large carryover. I think I'm going to treat this a little more delicately because it is, after all, an antique from the early part of the 20th century, almost 100 years old. 
So it seems obvious that a lot of people were using these machines for daily calculations and so you can imagine that the right hand several columns probably get most of the work or most of the wear, especially the units column over here. And that was the case with this unit where I found that the little uh, spring was uh, bent down causing the carryover not to work here on the units column. That being said, there are three columns in the middle of the unit that are white backgrounds instead of black. and I think for my purposes, I'm going to probably be using those for units, tens, and hundreds, only because these particular columns, the mechanism feels a little bit less worn, less wear in the chain, less slop, and it looks like the carryover system seems to work a little bit more reliably, at least it feels better. So just to not put any additional wear on the units column, that seems like it took a lot of the brunt of the of the wear over the decades this was used. I, I'm going to use the white columns uh, for my daily calculations that involve just addition. This is probably a good opportunity to compare the gem calculator with the Adiator and I've probably shown this on a previous video I'm pretty sure. I like this little Arithma Adiator. It, uh, it's brass, has a brass stylus, but it works uh, when it does the carryover, like for instance 5 plus 6, you have this up arrow here, where my finger is pointing, you have to go up around to make 11. So you have to pay attention to the indicators and manually perform the carryover if it needs it. So strictly mechanical calculating machines or adding machines like this little golden gem adding machine or in the case of the Adiators, these come in various uh, brands over the years. These are all of limited usefulness these days because you can get a lot more uh, calculating power out of your smartphone or just a pocket calculator. A little cheap $2 pocket calculator made in Asia will have, give you a lot more calculating power, but these represent history. They're historical, they're mechanical marvels from the early part of the 20th century. They don't really take up that much room actually. So in my case, you know, I started out years ago as a kid getting interested in the abacus and now years later not only did my abacus collection grow significantly, but I've collected a few of these other little mechanical marvels and they're kind of fun to collect and if you do a little bit of work on them and get them uh, fixed up so they're a little bit more reliable, you can actually use them for simple addition calculation uh, needs in your daily life. And in the case of both of these, uh, they hang around my desk and if I want to do a simple calculation, I can. And that's it. Okay guys, well, another addition to my growing collection of adding machines and calculating devices. I hope you found this interesting. As always, leave a comment down below. and. I encourage you, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.